ladies and gentlemen, two of our youngest competitors this evening, Jill Frodsham fighting out of the blue, blue, sorry, the red corner in the blue shorts representing Hama, just 16 years old, taking on Zach McGee, fighting out of one MMA, 17 years old. Zach in the black armor shorts. We touch gloves, and these two young men are gonna put it all on the line. Both guys getting their fighting careers off to an early start. Absolutely, well, Zach McGee, this is his second foray into the cage. 0-1 record, Frodsham making his amateur debut. Both guys looking very composed. I, uh, they're 16 and 17. It's it's frightening. Yeah, you, you'd see nothing like this 10 years ago. Oh, nothing even close. Again, two very reputable gyms here. Wow, nice sidekick there from McGee. And we're going to have to see if Frodsham can overcome the discrepancy in reach and of course people forget that it's not just the arms it's the legs ferocious punching there from Frodsham oh, very God. unorthodox almost karate like stance being adopted here for, uh, by Zach change of stance there, body kick. It's a very interesting style to see such a young man adopt so early into his into his career. He must have some kind of karate background or some kind of traditional martial arts background, you'd assume. Well, we'll start to see... Uh, Switching again. stances yeah. nicely he into his entries. Tried to get in on... Uh, uh, tried to get on on a takedown there, but... Great the takedown defense. It. Yeah, and... Wow. Blocks down for Turns it into his own double leg. In the side control, gonna pull him, pull those feet away from the cage. You've got to be careful with how you time that kind of push off from the fence on bottom, because you can, you know, be explosive and reverse, reverse the position, but you can also end up just kind of pushing yourself further away from the fence. Then you've got to work your way back there to get back up to your feet. Well, I see McGee being very methodical, turning his man, trying to get. I, I'm gonna guess he's gonna try and force that body up against the cage now, right in the corner. Right in that hammer corner, but taking away the opponent's ability to move, to transition, or to get away, stuffing his head up into the cage. This is a very mature performance from McGee so far. Very intelligent. He's keeping that uh, that overhook, sorry, underhook, when he's in that half guard position on the right hand side. And now you'll see he's gonna he's gonna try and work his left arm back in. Full guard now from Frochim as Frochim as he's trying to tie up the taller, taller man on top. He tries to throw some big shots. Ten seconds wow. left. And good round from the one MMA man. Zach McGee there. Yeah, you know, that little bit of experience, that one extra fight, that one. Yep. Trip to the cage. Could make the difference, but now Joe's had a round. He knows what it feels mm. like in there. Sorry, it was Frodsham who was coming out with that very traditional uh, martial arts stance. Yes, sir. They swapped positions so quickly in the fence after they got going. <laughs> <laughs> but no, very, very impressive uh, performance there by Zach McGee, but also the style of of Joe Frodsham is oh, he, so he, interesting. You would, you, would, you would suggest that he's done more than just train MMA. Yes. I, I, I think at some point in, in, in his fighting career, unless he's got maybe uh, coaches who have trained in traditional martial arts before, but you don't see a lot of guys adopting that stance unless they're very comfortable with it. Well, he seems quite... He's light on his feet. He's confident changing stances. Second three-minute round here. Zach McGee. The blue corner, the black armor shorts. Joe Frodsham fighting out of the red corner. The blue Switching stances. Shorts constantly. But McGee looking very technically sound. Yeah, keeps his guard, like, his def defense up nice and high. 
and has a pretty good idea of the range at which he's working. You see there was there wasn't even a flinch when that big right hand came whipping by. No, he's using his reach advantage very well. And Frotsham's got to find a way inside. Heavy low kick. Coach there, Sean Martin, asking Frotsham to step into the shot, step into it, don't just stay on the outside. Lovely. Use the hands. So bring his opponent's hands up and then shot in for the take now. Yeah, he's got, he's got his hands clapped. Yeah, underneath the, right underneath the hips. Up he goes, lovely. Straight into side control. Good, and with his man pushed up against the cage. This is where knees to the body is so underutilized. Fodrum trying to frame on his man's head there from the bottom, but I think he might be better off using that left hand to try and find an underhook and then follow that back to his feet because he is getting controlled here with oh, relative ease by Zach McGee. It's a good, I mean, he's strong in this position. He's using his left shoulder, applying a lot of pressure onto the head, keeping his man pinned down. But it is just control. Trotsam looking wow. for the up kick. Also tried to ankle pick, but has pulled his man into his guard. Well, I thought he was working that guard up a little bit higher. Let's see what Fordsham can do here from his guard, because most of the, the time we've seen him so far, he's been stuck in a, in a half guard position or a side control position. Look, Let's see, oh, he looks quite live here. Yeah, he stays busy. He doesn't just accept the bad position. And if he can, nice, he, uh, he's gonna make, he is absolutely going to make Zach McGee think when in these positions now. Zach doing a great job, though, of getting himself past those legs yep. so he doesn't stay trapped in any kind of guard. And, yeah, trying to secure those legs, step over. But look, again, it, you it know, looks like Fortune's committed guard. to a guillotine here. Can't, can't tell if his hands are locked. Yeah, I can't see if the second hand is there at all. Looks like McGee's all right. Just waiting out the position. Kedzik, and he's throwing everything into that squeeze. No, Threw up his hips. I think McGee's very safe here. Yeah. Good way to burn out your yeah. opponent's arms. Gurgle a little bit. Make the... Ooh. Again, a competitive round, but right now it just seems to me that Zach McGee... He's the more well-rounded fighter. Yeah, he's got more answers. There's definitely some positives that Frodjum can take away from this. Well, we say that like it's over, but with three minutes to go, Frodsham has shown that he's got some heavy hands. But it is for him to do now. But again, you this experience, 16 years old, and he's starting... It's uh, crazy. It's Absolutely insane. You've got to imagine that both of these guys are going to be real top prospects on the oh, scene yeah, by the time they're 18, he's, yeah, 19, Imagine what he's going to be like in two or three years' time, because yeah. these kids are like sponges. They're going to... All, all that information they're going to take in. And now it's just being given the chance to apply it, apply it, apply it. Here we go, third round. Zach McGee fighting for one MMA in the black Under Armour shorts. Joe Frodsham. Frodsham claims the middle of the octagon straight away. He's obviously coming out aggressive for this round. He knows he needs to do something. Straight in on a single. He's trying to mix it up. I think he's trying to put oh. McGee on his back, although McGee's gone for high, a very nice have we got a high angle hit. It looks very there. tight. That looks very tight. I think he... E he's staying in. That looks... Oh. He manages the guillotine and then goes for the underhook for the control. Very smart. Yeah. McGee now working to get that dominant position. It's a very high fight IQ here from McGee at such a young age, at this experience level. This guy is one to watch, as is Frodsum. Oh my goodness gracious me. Look, Frodsum works his way back into the full guard. We've seen that he can be aggressive off his back as well. This is where his most, his biggest opportunities have really come is when he's been in this guard. I'd say that armbar attempt he had in the previous round was the closest he's got to finishing this fight. He's looking again. Yep. Oh wow, it looks like oh. he's almost Oh wow! Oh my! Oh 
Mai! Oh! What a great scramble! It looked like he was going for a go go platter at first and then switching it up into like a, a hyper extended Omo platter, like a mix between Omo platter perhaps and an armbar. I mean, but Zach McGee, brilliant job getting out of that awkward, awkward ground position. Absolutely. Fraud should just do it everything he can to improve position. Look! McGee's keeping his hips nice and high though. He's going to yeah, shake him off here. Shake him off, come out the back. Yeah. And now, wow. Big hammer fist. Into side control again. McGee's corner calling for him to pull his man off the fence. Yeah, Pietro Manga there. And again, the, the mark of a fighter is how well they can listen while in the midst of. He listened very well to his coach there. You can tell he's a very coachable fighter in there. North and south position here. But it is, it's got to be so frustrating for young Joe Frodgen because he's not taking damage here. He's not getting, what, but he's being out positioned. He's fairly defensively sound from this bottom position. As you say, he's not absorbing a lot of punishment. He's regaining his guard from time to time. Absolutely, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't just allow the, the opponent to consolidate a position. He's making him work for everything, even to the point where he's throwing shots off his back. Mm. But see right here, as he's framing off, off McGee's face, I'd like to see him, instead of going for that frame, going for the underhook, perhaps, and then trying to follow it and get back to his feet that way. Because right now, Whoa. McGee's holding him there with that underhook. Steps over now. To mount. That one got through. Framing on the head. But again, you know, in one of the most horrible positions you can find yourself in, this young man, Joe Frodship, not worrying, not as a matter of fact, doing fighting. everything still he can fighting. to stand up. Absolutely brilliant effort. Well, we've said this all night, but I can't wait to see these two young men fight again. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, a dominant performance from McGee, but Frodson, awkward stand-up, creative off his back, never stopped fighting. Both of these guys are going to be top 16 prospects. 16 and 17 years old. Incredible. It's horrible when you absolutely watch incredible. a 16-year-old you know perfectly well could kick your ass as a 48-year-old yeah. man. <laughs> Terrible. Great fight. Great heart shown by the Hammer prospect. He does not need to have his head down at all. Great effort. Brilliant effort. Absolutely no shame in that performance oh, whatsoever. God. It's so exciting. The amateur, the amateur ranks are just so exciting nowadays. Young talent like this coming up all over the country. Brilliant. And it is so hard to look good while doing MMA. Absolutely. It's so hard to look good. And both of those guys showed really clean technique. A lot of composure, incredible for their age. Yeah, absolutely incredible for any age. You make it a debut here.